exactly two minutes past nine and you're still watching Smart Means Business. I'm Andrew Bariji and uh, definitely heading straight into our discussion of the day today uh, for the competitive strategies uh, for small and intermediary enterprises. And of course, getting to understand that uh, in, in the morning call, we made the brief introduction, uh, of course, uh, taking a look at the micro enterprises, small enterprises and the intermediary. Uh, enterprises, but of course, the biggest percentage being the micro, uh, which employ less than five people with not with a turnover annually, not more than ten million. Uh, that is, you get on shillings. And as we can observe, these are majorly uh, run by women and youth, and they are also majority startups. At the end of the day, so uh, there are quite lots of questions to really uh, encounter onto that. Now, for that reason, I'm joined with the Kwebi Ham Zamil. He's a spokesperson of CAFO. And we are going to be breaking down these matters further. Mr. Kwebi Ham Zamil, it's a pleasure to have you once again on the show. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, a, a very good morning. A very good morning to the mm. viewers of Smart Switch 4. It's good to be here and uh, happy new year. I think it's my <laughs> second time uh, this year that I'm on Smart Switch 4. Yeah. Uh, a very good morning, I would say. All right. Now, before we even uh, go any further, because uh, we've been uh, seeing uh, that uh, the biggest business, uh, uh, the most businesses are micro in mm -hmm. Uganda, mm -hmm. contributing about 93%. Mm -hmm. And um, with this 93%, it shows the fact that they have the biggest percentage, it shows you that. There are many of them that start up on a daily, mm -hmm. but uh, surprisingly, some don't see the first birthday, but if not only that, others are not in position to graduate mm -hmm. from micro mm -hmm. to, let me say, small. Mm -hmm. So what is causing that stagnation of uh, migration? Yes, it's wonderful. They've survived the two years and they are running, mm -hmm. which is okay. But the transitioning from uh, uh, micro and they start to also experience a turnover of about uh, 100 million. Yeah. Well, uh, first of all, I want to thank Ugandans mm. for going into entrepreneurship mm. because like uh, it has been uh, uh, ranked as uh, mm. one of the first, you know, five countries mm. where the entrepreneurship is, uh, you know, getting to the other level. To, to, to the other level. Every yeah. other day, people, like, you know, having the mind of being an entrepreneur itself Mm. Is, a, is, is, is a blessing and is a zeal mm. whether like you decided a little bit to go on your own and then you know, start your own enterprise and uh, this gives uh, good prospects mm. you know, like you know the country ahead of time is likely to get to other levels but uh, absolutely there are a lot of things that have really deterred them to get a breakthrough mm. and, uh, and uh, it's uh, emanating from uh, you know personal character is like traits themselves traits, mm. uh, it's also a little bit going to uh financial constraints mm. uh, get to levels of managerial managerial uh, mm. issues mm. Uh, you, you 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 get to a level of uh, collateral mm. financial kind of uh, support and all that mm. and uh, you know uh, regardless of having the idea mm. because like there is having the idea then there is implementation mm. and then like you know now as like uh, entrepreneurship would really start from extraction you've extracted a, probably a product a raw material yeah then now you're going to manufacturing i'll mm. really say you're also going out to distribution mm. and then so you're heading to services mm. you understand that you see like the country moves along the, those rails mm. so the challenge is also looking at the competition the competition from the foreign investors mm. at the end of the day you see, uh, when you look at foreign investors, the government has developed this policy of inviting foreign investors and all that. Mm. But how much have they tangled them with the with the local investors? Okay. At, the, at, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, uh, going to Rome does not make you, you know, a, a Roman. A Roman? No, 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 no. Mm. So, like these foreign investors, probably they, I, would, I, I presume, when they come in, they've come to make money mm. and also to enjoy the the, 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 the investment space. And then the policies that uh, the government have put in place, mm. you're going to have a tax holiday, uh, you, 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 you probably, uh, a, a lot of incentives. But after the incentives, what mm. really happens? And, and then what are the after effects, mm. the aftermath of, uh, of their investment in this country? Mm. Do they really, you know, uh, leave a rail of where the local investors would also prosper after they are going? Or probably they come and then they shut down mm. the, 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 the local investor. 
So, so at the end of the day, how much is the government protecting the local investor? And as at the micro level, I'll take. I'll give an example. Uh, let me go into value addition. Value addition. Uh, Web like. Um, we are realizing that uh, people into value addition as the local, yeah. the locals, uh, are, are the youth mm. that have really you not know, graduated and then like you know they've gone into the employment space and it has not worked for them, and then they've resorted of not going to a crime mm. uh, to survive, but they're like no, let us start something very small, small yeah. and then um, they themselves they cannot sustain themselves basically, and then. They are like okay let's use the you know mega resources the you know the small resources that we really have yes probably maybe this person uh, has failed to maintain himself he cannot accommodate himself so like he's living in the backyard of his father in the on the court in, in the quarter exactly the boys quarter and then also he has uh, also by god's grace gone into PD, pdm mm. parish development model he has uh, probably secured a two hundred thousand yes uh, or a five hundred thousand mm. now he has also a little bit gone into reskilling himself. He is this person who studied arts in arts. Mm. Arts in arts would not make you have a skill anyway. Ab, ab. Uh, he has gone into maybe developmental studies, mm. uh, which is so much little into what he's aiming at. Because now what he wants to help for is value addition. Mm. He wants to turn the raw material, mm. the agricultural raw material, into something, mm. and than that, into a fine product, a which fine is product. good. Mm. And now, at the end of the day, uh, now there is a policy. Mm. He has gotten money from PDM, five hundred thousand. Mm. Good. And now it's a little bit surviving at the father's boys quarter. Mm. You know. Uh, but again, that one is a little coming from a rich family. Mm. There's that one who came from a dog hollow. That one who came from Nakapiri Pit. He's the only Jesus for the family in Kampala. In Kampala. And also he has got siblings who are saying that you know Andrew is in Kampala. Probably I think if I leave dog hollow, I'll come and get to Andrew. Now there are those ones. Who are coming from abject poverty, but now they are saying that we want to do something. Okay. Understand that mm. this investor, this local investor, entrepreneur, is now competing with the, with with a foreign investor mm. who is making um, Raham, mm. an Indian. Mm. Understand that mm. for him, he wants to make some small juice here, but Raham is saying that you know, like we are beating the whole market and all that. You know, we must shatter you. Mm. Uh, not in bad faith, but now that's how business is. Mm. Now this person uh, goes. He wakes up, he's happy, he has learned how to turn an orange into a juice. He has also learned where to get the, the, the containers. He has also learned where to make the, 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 the labels. The labels. Maybe at a small scale from uh, NASA. And uh, he is using some other expertise that he has of branding, packaging a little bit. And he wants to start with 20 bottles. Mm. Let me start from there. 20 bottles. And then mm. after producing these, but he has already employed somebody again. Mm. Who is paying 5,000? Help me with the parking, help me with, you know, a little all bit. This, yeah. Exactly. He has gone to NASA, he has given in a 50,000, make for me labels. He's also, you know, like, you know, uh, facilitating other people, other services to go on. Mm. Now, after the product is ready, and then UNBS comes, it's now government policy, mm. you must accredit the product. And you know what they want? They want 2 million. So accredit the product. Exactly. You see, you see, PBM is good. It gave him five hundred thousand, and then the policy to the allow two million. to allow his product get in the market, they want two million. Okay. And now, at the end of the day, look at the policy. This policy will not promote the local entrepreneur, entrepreneur at a micro level. It will promote some other company, an investors, you know, for an investors' company. Now, this man's dream, this young man's dream, is shattered. Okay. Now, at the end of the day, he'll be like, what can I do now? He goes to certain, you know, uh, economic experts, you know, who are very, who are very ready to give him some, some, some kind of uh, free, you know, kind of consultation services. And then they tell him, you know, get to UDB, Uganda Development Bank. Mm. You know, like they are, they, 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 they are trying, they, they have the other pro pro product. Of, of, of uh, import substitution, value addition, value all addition. that. And mm. you know, do you know, the percentage, the interest percentage is only 12. Okay. Mm. Because this fine guy is educated, he beats up all the system, all the bureaucracy of, of the corporate levels. So he walks in smartly, he goes to UDB, Chicago Development Bank. Yeah. He's received. He elaborates about his project. 
after okay yeah. now so we are now seeing him uh, after failing exactly. to, to be certified by university exactly. because, because of the company policy so now he's heading he's to he's heading for finance for finance exactly okay now i'm trying to show you the financial constraint mm. that's happening now he's got into the udp mm. he's now at Uganda Development Bank mm. he's welcomed they are so much you know uh, impressed mm. by his products mm. he has put his product in the bag mm. UNBS wants 2 million mm. I mean, these other challenges, but he wants to first probably accredit his product. You do when he reaches UDP, they tell him twelve percent more compared to other banks. Twelve percent. Twelve percent. Which welcome. This is the idea we want. We want Ugandans, you know, investors like this. You're gonna need value additioners and all that. It's good. Mm. We hate people pro who export raw materials without adding products, without adding value. Because when you add value, you employ other people in the in the, that chain of adding value, then other people get employed. I understand that. So wow, his, his smile is at the first 30 minutes they give him. But at the end of the day, telling this money we are giving you should be secured. Do you have collateral? Okay. He doesn't have collateral. Mm. And then they tell me, okay, we can give you one hundred thousand USA dollar, which is close to. 380 million but they want collateral but, that can cover up that. but if i may inquire <laughs> why is that person even going for a loan of a hundred thousand dollars vis-a-vis if he even just got some the the, he, uh, the money that he obtained for his first development was from pdm mm. that creates a picture of if he's to borrow that limits he should borrow in uh, okay yes now mm. pdm has got a limit mm. uh, yeah exactly and by the way <laughs> this is a smart guy who has beaten the pdm kind of uh hurdles mm. that he has achieved the 500,000. Mm. and now he has not paid the pdm money back he's a first time borrower in pdm oh yeah now pdm wants its money mm. understand that mm. and now the only option he has is probably have a collateral Mm. In the PDM, they did ask for collateral, collateral, but he had something to do. So now, after going to UDB, exactly now UDB, the collateral. they want a collateral. Mm -hmm. So what next? What next? Mm. You can imagine. Mm. He's frustrated. He gets back. He walks out of UDB. Mm. He gets into the field. Now, do you know what he decides? He said, "I'm going to live as a fugitive. Mm. My product will find its its, its 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 position in the market, regardless. It takes the risk." <laughs> Less than that, yeah. he takes the what? The risk. The risk. After taking the risk, you sit in Chikubo, a little bit sneaky, a little bit whatever. But now in Chikubo, they tell him, you know, as you're getting there, you must have an e receipt. Okay. Understand that? Mm. Any product that goes in Chikubo should have a what? An e receipt. An e receipt. That's the system now with URA. Mm. Now, at the end of the day, this person lives a frustrated life. He lives as a fugitive. As in there, Somebody who offered to have his products in his stock mm. somewhere on William Street or in Chikubo or Nabgabo mm. is called. You didn't tell me your products are not certified. You were invested here mm. and you know it's almost you know like he has it has mugged my stock. Okay. He runs further away from the vicinity of his clients and, 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 and customers. So that means we get that 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 the issue of policy that really uh, makes sense mm. to a young entrepreneur in Uganda is still lacking. Mm. You cannot ask two million to certify a product of a fresh graduate who has decided to go mm. into value addition. value addition. That means the Uganda raw materials will either be added on value by a foreign investor who has the capacity. A foreign investor from China gets a loan of, of whereby like he has only two percent mm. interest from interest. China mm. exim bank. He's competing mm. with a Ugandan who has gone out to a commercial bank At and is getting an a loan of int uh, his, uh, the interest loan of 29, 30 percent. Will they compete? It will be. It, it will can't be, happen. It 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 can't it, 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 it can't it happen. Definitely can't happen. Now that's the challenge about mm. policy and all that. When we get into, if there are those ones who have the capacity, mm. as in Ugandans who have the capacity, they can go through the UNPS certification and all that. They have the money and all that. They lack managerial skills. They have the certain character traits. You see, any business to prosper, mm. any enterprise to prosper, 
it depends on the traits of the entrepreneur because it gives direction. Any character of his will have either a positive or negative impact on, on, uh, on the production and the return of the investment. Mm. You see, you walk into a company and then they tell you to the man take it to the managing director. And then you see the vision of the managing director, you know, really a little bit, not really giving a green light. Mm. You know, and you just know that, you know, it's a matter of time that it will collapse. Mm. You, you understand? It's a matter of time it will what? It will collapse. You find that he has this trait of like, you know, employing relatives. Yeah. Only. Understand that? He, he believes in relatives. Mm. And at the end of the day, you find the way he manages his issues, his issues, uh, his the, uh, interpret issues. So funny that for him, he's this kind of person when you tell him that, you know, formalize mm. the system, he doesn't want. Is this kind of a person who do not really want probably to have audited books? Yes. Understand that? He feels that if the books are so audited, then the taxation issues will come very close. Mm. He doesn't know that if he does not have audited books, he will not have access to, to finance, as in loans and all that. Mm. Because any financial company that would really want when it works into UDB, they will ask for audited books and all that. Mm. Understand that? Absolutely. And then also uh, tax certification. Understand that? That is, did this one is, you know, a good, you know, tax, whatever, and all that. So other people, however big the empire is, financially, they want to live in an informal sector. That, that character of elicity mm. within them. Mm. So at the end of the day, such an empire also collapses. That's also one of the reasons. That's why... How is it collapsing when they're not paying taxes? It, it's, uh, yeah, it will collapse. <laughs> at, at, at the end of the because day... Because they're not auditing their books. No, they're not auditing their books. But remember, yeah. even going in the market, because at the end of the day, mm. somebody that you want to sell your products will probably want to buy from a certified taxi as a tax organization. Maybe if it's a distributor. But, uh, uh, but a customer may not really care whether... No, 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 not really. Certified. I want to assure you, mm. today go in Chikubo. Mm. You cannot enter a product in Chikubo this, this time when you don't have an e-receipt. And an e-receipt will report directly that Andrew is a taxpayer and this product is coming from, from factory A and Mozami has bought this kind of cartons. Don't they have options? And now, now let me tell you, an option right now mm. in the dot com era, understand that, mm. is almost not there. Because at the end of the day, if I'm buying from you mm. and you are not tax certified, it will affect my business. Because at the end of the day, when I'm making audit, my audited books, mm. I must reflect you within my audit. This that product. Need, 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 uh, yes, I, buy, I bought this and all that. I'm upsetting this. But uh, mm. Mm. a little bit, because... I saw something here where I'm, I'm, I'm driving it to that in, in line with options. Mm. Of late, uh, many people now talking about the middle class mm. shifted from the, uh, from the, uh, to the suburbs, to the faraway centers. Mm. Mm. And now uh, we are seeing some traders who have established mm. shops, you know, some small businesses that have established shops to bring these commodities near mm. uh, to the customers, mm. whereby somebody doesn't have to come to Chikubo to get a product, mm. but they can access it to their home area. Mm. I'm looking at somebody with that thinking, and that is his option. You see, at the end of the day, everyone today has a tax identification number. Mm. Understand that? And absolutely, e-receipt is crossing all over. That's mm. one. Yeah. And, uh, and any manufacturer should deal with big distributors, big wholesalers, mm. if you are to expand. Expand. Exactly. Because at the end of the day, if you are probably to go into small retailers mm. that you look for them, you're going to spend more. Okay. At, at the end of the day. Because if somebody is coming from Arua and he wants to buy, or he's coming from Congo, he wants to buy to purchase things of, of, of close to 200 million. Mm. He's taking them to Congo. He will not go in Bulenga. Mm. He will automatically go in big stores. Mm. And absolutely. So the distribution chain will start from big medium up to do up to the, the exactly point. now for you if you don't want to grow as in your enterprise manufacturing point if you don't want it to grow mm. probably you only aim at, at this small, small one at the end of the day so it will live there it's can't, as if it's growing it's not growing but and you can make you can create a network of them it's it's an effort i think i know you see you still let me tell you mm. there are other factors that would create a product get at the helm of the market 
The big, the big, the big manufacturer will probably market his product bigger than you. And now if people you are living within, and because you are running away from certain formalities, mm. at the end of the day, certain products will hit the bar as in the market. And absolutely, the market will come, will follow that uh, in a product that is on trend. Mm. And trend means marketing. You understand that? Yeah. So, they, so, so therefore, there is no way you wake up today and start beating, you know, a certain soda product, brand. But then it will be, 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 be very hard. That's why at the end of the day, certain people have always even wanted to attach themselves a little yeah, with, with big products. Somebody wants even to create a name which is even close to a soda company mm. because she has already hit the, the bar. The bar. Mm. Now, okay, that is right. Mm. But then it brings me back to this notion. Mm. So, because according to what you're saying about the irisit, mm. it's more of formality in mm. doing things. Mm. But a big businesses in, in this country are not, are not formal. But then they are surviving still. Yeah, you see, they are surviving at what level? Let me tell you, the formal sector, the formal sector mm. has been taken up by the... The informal sector. Ah, by the by 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 the foreign by the foreign investment. Sorry, the foreign investment. The foreign investment. So, and eighty percent, seventy percent of Ugandan of Ugandan, you know, these businesses are informal. Yeah. And when we get to the thirty percent, mm. are foreign what mm. investors? So the formal ways. So you want to say that the foreign investors who are formal are working at a loss? Surprisingly, the thirty percent who are formal are the one employing the majority, as in the middle class. The and now the informal seem to live, survive, mm. when actually they are not a little making a breakthrough. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. E exactly. And by the way, you see... They are surviving, but they are not breaking. E exactly. You see, you see, you see, man, when we talk about entrepreneurship, it should be, the manufacturing should be in touch with the trade. Mm. As you manufacture... The trade sector, those in the who are trading, should be in line. Once you lose their focus, you are gone. Mm. That's why the Chinese, as they are, they are in these industrial parts, what they've realized that the trade sector is not a little on their side. Do you know what they've decided? Mm. What they've decided, they've they've decided to to, to to be in the manufacturing at the manufacturing point and at the trade point. Okay. That's why you find that the Chinese are in Chikubo. They're also there. They are the same people manufacturing. Why? Because they want to have big distribution. They are the distribution point. Mm. The reason that the local market and the local trade has not yet appreciated their products. That's why you're seeing that the traders in Uganda, mostly in Kampala, they are fighting with the government over which policy are you using that you're allowing the Chinese to come from the manufacturing point, get to distribution, get to... Mm. I understand that. Yeah. Uh, th that means they are saying that they are killing, uh, they, 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 they are killing off the survival, you know, levels of the locals. The locals. Which is very true. Mm. But the Chinese have also realized that, that their products are still not yet appreciated by this trade. Mm. So what they do, they fix themselves also in trade. Mm. Products are coming from, uh, I'm with Andrew, we have our factory, then they say, Muzamil, get to the trade point, mm. get to the shop, distribution point. So, uh, so as we, Andrew manufactures my colleague, he sends them to me. Sends them to me. And then probably I sell the products. Now the, the products get to the market. Understand that? Otherwise, if you, if, if you want the company to be redundant, mm. probably just concentrate at the manufacturing point. And then don't focus on the distribution. The distribution. I understand that. Mm. Once you pay the distribution, absolutely, you'll eat your own products. <laughs> I, 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 I'm looking at that. It's, 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 it's exactly. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's say it's exactly 26 minutes. Uh, we're going to take a short break. And, of course, we're returning. I'm still with Mr. Kwe Ham Zamil. Uh, we were talking about uh, competitive strategy for uh, strategies for small businesses. I think this discussion is quite very insightful. Of course, we're coming up on a more interesting factor coming up after this break.
24 driving business These holidays, you don't need to go far to find the best entertainment. Have I got a surprise for you? All you need to do is stay connected to DSTV. I'm so excited. Pick your moment of fun and share it with your family. Oh, that's good to share. Overpowered. Pass the keeper, Jude Bellingham. Pick the best stories and share them with your friends. Match the step and win. Pick your moment to shine with the world's hottest stars. Juventus get their goal. Alert. Because it's your moment oh. to hang out with the characters you love. That's exactly what I do. Whether you're at home or on the move, make it a holiday to remember. This is the final round. Ain't gonna stop me now. Because these holidays, it's your moment to enjoy the best entertainment. So get and stay connected to DSTV to enjoy every moment. Bonoburu magic key, buru magic key is my joy. Bonoburu magic key, buru magic key, wange. Smart 24 Driving Business minutes to the top of the hour you're watching the smart men's business samantha barija and of course still to remind you before you proceed into the topic of discussion of the day today smart 24 tv on go tv that is channel 320 and the sdb channel 372 and of course uh, uh, that is for those with uh, in position of decoders and those that are much more into the gadget side we have something for you. Uh, you can go to the Google Play Store and download the Smart Digital application. And uh, the beauty about this application is that when you download this, you will be able to stream uh, Smart FM, uh, Smart 24 TV, and NBS Radio at the same time. Now, still applies to the streaming perspective. Uh, you can go to our YouTube channel that is at Smart 24 TV Live, and you will be able to stream Smart 24 TV regardless of where you are located around the globe as we deliver to you both local and international uh, business updates. And now, when it comes to the social media bit of it, at Smart 24 TV, that's on Twitter or X, and uh, also Smart 24 TV official. Uh, that's on Facebook. Uh, you can still catch us there as we uh, put up discussions. You can participate and be a part of these discussions uh, here on Smart24 TV. And uh, for those of you that are business researchers, Smart24.tv, uh, that is uh, the official website uh, right there. And the plot 42 and I love you. That's our home where I'm seated in studio right now broadcasting live the business related information you can come and check us out visit us let's discuss and see how we can help each other grow businesses see how we can have partnership partnerships formal partnerships uh, but of course uh, uh, with an intention of efficiency and uh, productivity uh, to, uh, to create economic impact uh, in the long run and now proceeding with our discussion Mr. Kwebi Hamzamil uh, you know, you mentioned something which was quite eye-opening. I don't know where, whether some people really got it well, uh, most especially those that are just graduated and you want to start up businesses. When you mentioned something that the informal sector 
might seem to be thriving but not at a breakthrough point. Mm -hmm. Answering the first question I, uh, I, I, I posed to you about why do we have businesses remain micro and they're not graduating? And it brought me back to when you mentioned the 30%, if 70% are informal, and uh, the 30% are formal, which is swallowed by the foreign uh, investors. And yet that 30% employs the biggest chunk of the middle class. It's quite a very eye-opening. So now that poses a question be to you, and probably you'll be answering uh, people that are doing this small business, that are planning to start up these businesses. Can we say we are done with the era of informality? It's, well, because we've survived for so long on this era mm, in, well, in Uganda. You see, at the end of the day, uh, formalizing is the best thing. Because when things are in, in, in formality, mm. it gives proper projection. Both the entrepreneur, the policymaker, and the government as a whole. Mm. And the once you live informal, probably even the closest neighborhood will not know you. That's mm -hmm. the problem. Because life is all about exposure. Standing out at the altar and say, here I am. Mm. Any product that would live in mediocrity will probably not hit the bar. Yeah. You, you understand that? Yeah. And, and, and uh, at some point, uh, because of our informalities, I'll give you an example. There is when one president of this country chest, chest of all the foreign you know, investors, investors, specifically the Asians. Mm. And then their treasuries, their wealth, went in the hands of the Africans. Mm. Make research. How much did the Africans, Ugandan Africans, who got this, uh, this wealth, how much did they add on? For the country. For the, for the country and for they themselves, for the individual themselves. I lived in Jinja. And I saw people when the Indians came mm. back, mm. people who had who had lived with these structures for over a decade mm. being chased out of these structures, structures where they were collecting rent, having a lot of money, free money. Mm. At the initial stage, they did not invest in these, th in these things, mm. but they got in free money. Mm. And then I saw some families who were forced out of this home because the Indians had come back, mm. and then putting their belongings at the veranda, asking for an Indian to give them some time <laughs> that they will come and fetch them to where they don't know. What does that mean? That still, because of the informality, mm. they could not manage. I'll give an example of Zimbabwe. Mm. When late uh, former president of Zimbabwe, uh, Mugabe, Mugabe mm. took over power, he, you know, he chased off the whites, the whites mm. who were former mm. in the agricultural, industry-related kind of whatever. The farms. Mm. Agricultural plantations were given to the Africans. Mm. I want to assure you, time reached whereby they thought that surely I wish the whites could come back. Somebody is given a farm of five kilometers, but because he does not have the what the skill and he is informal in his way of doing things, mm. he wants to live elusive. You see, that's a problem. You know, people want to live in come up pledge and deception. Mm. <laughs> That is sometimes, I don't want to say it is an African mind, mm. but a little bit, we are very creative. That even our businesses we do, sometimes you don't even want to tell your neighbor that you are making an orange juice kind of a product. If I tell him, oh, yeah, formula there is like, you know, it is within our DNA. Mm. I understand that. Mm. And, uh, and uh, you feel that if you come out, there is an omen. Okay. That is likely to befell you. You know, you know, like <laughs> now the, the secretive nature that we live make us we, we know we even transfer it within our enterprises. Mm. I understand that. It will, we, we, so at the end of the day, you find that we don't really grow. However, 
it also goes with the level of education education now we've got a young generation mm. that is so much into value addition entrepreneurs and all that now the culture has also changed mm. i want that that a child now at school in secondary school a senior one is already put on the entrepreneur project that he works on he works on and all that mm. which is a little which is really good now that's why you are seeing very many young entrepreneurs are getting on board on value addition i love that mm. now the government should help these local young entrepreneurs mm. as long as they leave them hanging then the foreign investors will sit on them the foreign investors are here to make money mm. they, they will ex obviously profits profits will be what expatriated, expatriated. i understand that mm. now before we've been also living so informal whereby like we extract raw material mm. and then they don't go into manufacturing if they go into manufacturing it's the foreigners to take that space the space now from there they are supposed to go to distribution mm. and then also now service the service w what do i mean that right now the young investors and entrepreneurs are saying these oranges should not leave the country in mm. raw form mm. that they are going to other countries kenya and all that abroad let them be turned into manufacturing mm. turned into a product yes and a shift from extraction mm. there is unemployment, unemployment. level mm. manufacturing mm. unemployment level mm. distribution unemployment level mm. services now that is the middle class mm. the elite class which provide the services managerio mm. you know the transport services blah 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 name it yeah. now if an entrepreneur if i was the president of this country if i was the, the president of this country mm. i would look at this local investor however small he is for as long as he's in value addition mm. i'd look at him as an asset of, of, this, country. of this country somebody waking up mm. and decides to turn an orange into juice mm. preserve it and then make it a fine product whether in a counter form i'd look at polishing him mm. and satisfying him the satisfying fee i would not look at it as an income to the government like the way the government looks at that the certification fee is an income let that let government not feel that the certification fee of a, of of a local uh, a, a local entrepreneur's product is an invest is, is, is an income is an income no the income is this young entrepreneur because one turning the product into turning the raw material into a fine product is already employing people yeah whether in a scanty form whether in a formalized way mm. because if it is to squeeze oranges and all that then is doing it with a colleague who is paying 5000 okay who is paying 5000 who is you know like at the end of the day okay. if he makes 10 boxes he has already saved me as the president an employment of the youth that is already employing 10 people mm. then making him a fugitive look for 2 million mm. and understand that to satisfy his product that makes me hungry that's why me i don't have kind words want to look in the tv mm. kind words for unbs Uganda National Bureau of Standards. I don't have kind words for this. So it has contributed to it has contributed to a failure of our local investors. And remember, our local investors and local entrepreneurs, value additioners, are young boys who are not em who are, who are, who are not employed. They are young, you know, young blood. Mm. These are youth. Mm. Sorry to say young boys, because they are both girls and and boys exactly these ones are unemployed fresh grad ones they've made research about certain products and all that why do you make them fidgety why do you make the, it so hard for them to satisfy their products it's, 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 it's really very very bad because there is no way we shall beat unemployment now mr koi hamza that's a wonderful point now speaking about uh, them being fugitives
because I believe uh, you've been mentioning this is something to do with policy. Yes. And we know for sure this country, when the policy, uh, it's bureaucratic in most cases when it comes to adjusting it. Mm -hmm. So what is the short-term solution for these young people? Uh, for now, uh, to avoid being fugitives, because we've also realized, according to your discussion, that even when they decide to be informal, it won't work out for them. So exactly. how are they navigating through this, despite the hardships and uh, the unfriendly policies? How are they make ensuring that their products are actually formal? You, you see, the, it starts with policymakers. You see, mm -hmm. the policymakers of Uganda are so much political and economic. That's mm -hmm. the problem. You see, they are, they, I'm sorry, they are selfish. Some of them, some of the policymakers, most of the policymakers in Israel are selfish. And they don't have enough research. Mm. That's the problem. You see, you see, it does not take a lot of knowledge to understand that high fee to certify a product of an entrepreneur is a deterrent to development. That means, let's change favorable policy. You cannot give me as a government 500,000 or 1 million from PDM. And then for you to satisfy my product, ask me 2 million. Mm. Logically, what's that? Because at the end of the day, you continue to have pressure of unemployment. Yeah. And first of all, our old investors, local investors, mm. they don't want, they don't have that expertise of management. Of managing you know big kind of uh, entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs. that need a lot of uh, technocrats and all that for them they've gone into real estate mm. yes for them they've gone into real estate these tycoons of kampala with their kids you don't tell them of making factories because it needs you know like the, 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 there's a lot of expertise that is needed mm. so somebody would rather have his money going to ktca buy land of two million usa dollar get his leads of around 49 years or 99 years, then eventually put a structure of around 10 million US dollars, an arcade, and then brings his brother or his son to manage the arcade, brings five kidneys, and then he starts collecting money. Oh. Yeah, are you looking at that? That is an investment of around 10 million US dollars. Understand that? Now, an Indian or maybe Chinese comes in this country with 200,000 US dollars. Oh. And then, he gets, you know, an investment certificate from Uganda Investment Authority. Mm. And then he is given, he's told all the incentives is in the industrial park, mm. Bali Industrial Park. Now he brings semi-finished, you know, raw materials. And, and all of that. Or maybe he does maybe uh, uh, assembling. Mm. And then he starts assembling things. And then also it's called the manufacturer. Understand that? Mm. Because he has the money. And now you, he starts employing. You, you go into his financial department, whatever, accounts department. He's employing like 10 people. Hmm. You go into his marketing department. He's employing like 20. 20 people. You go into kind of production unit. He's employing like 40. Hmm. You go into the transport sector. He's employing, you know, at the end of the day, this person is employing almost 150 people. people. 200,000 US dollars. This old Ugandan... Who fears to go into value addition because he has got a lot of technicalities? He has an investment of 10 million US dollars. Uh -huh. He has built an arcade. Uh -huh. He's employing his son, is the manager, and five cleaners. These five cleaners don't pay, pay as you earn uh -huh. because he calls the manager his son at Sheraton and then he gets pocket change, he gets Sasule, can pay, those whatever. Now, at the end of the day, how much the 200,000 investment, this person here, all his workers are paying, pay as you earn. Mm. Understand that? And uh, they are sustaining themselves individually. Mm. That is the foreign investor. It's a 200,000. He's employing 150,000. Now, when a Ugandan wants to turn into exactly what they're doing, what the foreign investor is doing mm. is a young entrepreneur. Who does not have the capacity to build an arcade mm -hmm. but he has realized that he can add value on something he has gotten silver fish mukene mm -hmm. he can mix it with other ingredients then it comes out he brings out a product or a fish product which can you know 
you know, you can enhance mm. health issues and all health that. Issues. I understand that. Mm. Now, for you, you are here as government with your UNBS. You are saying, you know, first satisfy this. We pay two million. What is it? No, like I'm sorry, I don't want to be. Uh, okay, now, mm. so what? <laughs> at the end of the day, what we want now, government should change the policy. Mm. Let certification be a little affordable. So I'm not saying mm. product should not be certified mm. because unsatisfied product, mm. the consumables, or even the non-consumables, they are health, they, they have healthy issues. Because if this boy is making orange juice, and then the preservatives and other ingredients, they can be, they can have healthy consequences. Consequences. And therefore, the UNBS should come. UNBS should be empowered with skilled personnel that should come and then nurture. Now, UNBS should nurture. And actually, those skilled personnel are the reason as why that piece that because it, administrative costs, uh, that's a government agency. I it, mean, they, it, uh, uh, that, because I believe at the time they charged it to be up to million. Mm. They are factors considered. Uh, You've mentioned the skilled people. Yes. They have to be, these are paid highly. You know, I, want, I, I want to show you. The product, this product this boy is bringing out mm. is going to employ thousands of people at the end of the day. And, and nearly thousands of people will pay, pay as you earn and all that. Okay. At the end of the day, mm. you, are, you are killing it because of two million, mm. but the government is losing billions of taxes tomorrow. But, which will, and then tell you, for you having in mind mm. that these two million is what pays directly the UNBS. No. This money goes in the government copper. But the government, they don't say that UNBS looks for its money to be paid. No, 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 no. Have, don't have that mind. If this product of the Ugandan gets in the market, mm. it enlarges, it employs a lot of people, more people pay taxes, pay as you earn, then UNBS will live a better life. So let me ask, how are the people that have certified their goods being able to do it? Because they can manage. And that's why the foreign investors are the one in the space of manufacturing. Of value addition. That's it. But even Ugandans are, are there. There are very few. Okay. For those you know that, that this economy, okay. you, let me tell you, mm. the, the, you know that this economy is man, managed by Asians. Absolutely right. Exactly. And you know why they are managing it? They are using our raw materials that we have, understand that, because they have the money. Mm. And they take it to another level. So you mean there is no way out for the small, for the small business owners? Because... Is Assuming the policy is not going to, to be tampered with right now, and we have business has to keep on moving. Uh, for us, we are economic activists. And let me tell you, they will change it. Once it's not, they will change it. Let me tell you, they will see how other, you know, at the end of the day, unemployment is going to expand. Unemployment is going to expand. Mm. And crime rate will go high. And once it goes high, they will think, let me tell you, an innovator of a country is an asset. Yeah, right. An innovator of a country is an asset. Because very few people can decide to become entrepreneurs. You see the politicians in Africa, mm. they have a lot of money in their bedrooms. That's why you hear that a certain politician, thieves came and took billions of money from his bedroom. Mm. And do you know how much? Did you know why? Because they are not, invest they are not entrepreneurs. That's why you see people stuck in the, in the political positions and they don't want to leave. Because they don't know how to invest money. Okay. You see? But I want to assure you, if politicians were also entrepreneurs mm. with all the money they have in Africa, unemployment would be a nightmare. Now, talking about uh, uh, policy, I feel in, uh, it may not be the only challenge that we have. Exactly. There are quite more exactly. other trade. challenges. Other yeah. challenges, yes. Which are there. So when do we anticipate that this can actually be dealt with? Because mm. in your line of discussion, it mm. seems to be like the core, which is uh, limiting businesses to export. Exactly. You see, you see the certification bit of it. The certification. Not everybody is going to fail certification. Mm. There are those people with money. There are those people with money. Mm. But for me, I'm so much on certification also for the young entrepreneur, fresh graduates who are on the street who have decided to go and go go, who have also gone to the presidential. Do you know that this presidential initiative, boy and girl child, mm. will go to West 
if this policy is not changed. Every other, every other day, the president of Uganda thought of a good idea to reskill the wow. youth. If you've gone for courses in life that have not enhanced, that have not changed you, mm. let them reskill you. Go into, you know, uh, hands-on skills, which is a very good thing. But now, how will the how how will this 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 product of his of of his you know grad ones get to a policy of this nature? The boy come when he knows how to make some maybe to, to to make juice or something like that. He's the only you know people in the system will beat him. So that is now for the young entrepreneur, those ones who don't have the money but they have the what the, the knowledge. Government should come now. Other challenge I was thinking about traits, character. Mm. I think I explained about to character and all that. Because at the end of the day, yes, the country, any country to develop, it should lo it should have enough to extract. Oh. Those are the resources. The resources. Oh. Congo has a lot of uh, extractions from the of raw material of, of, of minerals, precious oh. minerals. Uganda is extracting agricultural products and all that. Then at the end of the day, after extracting them agricultural products, where do you take them? Now, before then, you'd get coffee, oh. put, it on the put it on the plane or on the ship abroad. abroad. Now, right now, the foreign investors realized, oh, Uganda is having a lot of products they are extracting and they are putting them on the plane. Now, like I said, okay, let's come and fix ourselves as investors. Oh. Now, they get these extracted products, they put them in on, man on, man on manufacturing point. Now from the manufacturing point, they get them to distribution. After distribution, there should be good service providers for distribution, but that's where the, the, whatever is. Because at the end of the day, services like transport, services like marketing, services like, you know, they, they should be, the service providers should be so, 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 so good. Actually, so they, mm. as we wind this up, mm. getting to that point, I'm still in line with the certification bit because me, mm. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to understand from the perspective of if the product line has become tricky, mm. why don't, why don't, doesn't the service sector then get to involve these young people? Why don't they focus on the service sector for now mm. as a short term solution? Mm. You see, <laughs> at the end of the day, at the end of the day, services are also satisfied, satisfied. Mm. If you're a lawyer, you don't go in court when you don't have it. But, but at least mm. for the service, mm. it's more reliant on your skill, on your ability. Yes. When it comes to the product, it has mm. to do the cost in terms of the raw material. Th th that's, that, that, that's very true. Mm. I want to assure you services are, again, very tricky. Mm. For one reason, that you should be of a highly skilled person to become a consultant in any service. Mm. You understand that? And I think, that, I think and, I, 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 and, and by the way, uh, you see, uh, services are so much into white collar jobs. Mm. Do you know that? And there is much competition. That's why we are addressing unemployment. Yes, unemployment by providing skills. All those people that those young entrepreneurs, those young stars, you are seeing into the presidential initiative, skilling the the, the youth, the, 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 the girl and the boy child, the boy something like that. It is, it is killing them. Mm. It's because they, are, they, they, they claim to be service providers. I started marketing. But what at some point, market? but do you think that even services can need skills? For example, ICT skills? Yes, ICT skills. Absolutely. There should be a product. But if some yeah, of these yeah, products yeah. are not thin, are uh, not visible. Yeah, yes. They, they, like, they, they, they are more of a cyber. Yes, they are more cyber. But I want to assure you, mm. uh, if you go, if you are an IT expert, mm. and then probably uh, Nile Breweries employs you, mm. behind Nile Breweries there is a product, and without that product, you you'd be put to use. Do you you're not using you 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 you're not. Adopted. That's what I'm saying. Because like that, right that, here, yeah. as we are here on this television, there is a, a product that they are selling. Mm. I understand that. So that means the media cannot exist without the tangible. Product. product. So the tangible product will always push for the services. If you're a good driver, at the end of the day, you're not going to drive services on your truck. 
Interesting. <laughs> and of course, we managed to the top of the hour. I've been with Kwebi Hamzamil and of course, they're breaking down matters to do with the competitive strategies uh, for small and intermediate enterprises, which are definitely constitute the biggest percentage here. But I uh, hope it's been quite insightful uh, for those uh, that are planning to, you know, uh, get into the space of uh, business. Well, thanks for being part of today's uh, Smart Means Business Edition. And of course, wishing you a very prosperous week, uh, full of business profitability, and uh, so many in that line. Till tomorrow, a very good morning.